upstanding everywhere just be upstanding lift your hands wave it on to Jesus thank him for his presence in this place whether you are tuning in from your home following online wave your hands and say thank you Jesus for your presence that is in this place Emmanuel Father, tonight I have come. I ask that in my life you will show your power. You will display your glory that the world will see and know that I serve a living God. Tonight, Every yoke, every burden, every chain, every obstacle, every embargo before now that existed in my life will go down by your mighty power in Jesus' name. Amen. foundational deliverance that's what we want to discuss today foundational deliverance foundational deliverance it's good to see every one of us more people still coming I welcome you to Pneumatech and I know that your lives will never remain the same in Jesus name and those of you who came with your family members it's going to be a wonderful time amen the word of god remains the number one and ultimately the tool for enlightenment for deliverance and for genuine transformation god's kind of transformation is not only face value it's not just on the surface the transformation that god guarantees starts from inside out that is true change that can happen to a man that can happen to a family that can happen to a system that can happen to a nation and that is what god is doing every time we come into this place now i feel the power of god very strong because i know god wants to visit certain age-long situations that have been entrenched in our lives it doesn't mean that you are not anointed you are but there are things to be dealt with so that what God has placed in you will truly manifest it is important that you understand that if not for uh, the help of the Spirit of God and the illumination that the Word of God can bring to a man it is possible that a believer even a pastor a minister can be held bound by satanic vices and not know you can still prosper but be under bondage in exodus chapter 1 if you read verse 7 and you read verse 12 the bible says that the more they afflicted the people of israel the more they multiplied yet they were under bondage okay that is the reason why 
when you begin to encounter the true and authentic ministry of deliverance it affects your very foundations it affects your very origins your roots and it begins to address things and make sure that everything is in god's order as it was intended to be so for some of us listening to me now maybe even following online you may be doing well financially for some people you may be doing well in your family some may even be doing well in ministry but by the time we are through with this teaching today in fact halfway into this teaching today you will realize the need for deliverance and how that when you thoroughly experience the ministry of deliverance you will operate in a higher version of what you are seeing of your life now for some of you you can prosper more one car is not enough don't even if don't even look at one car's prosperity <laughs> all right and it's my desire that as you listen and you participate in this service that you will insist and believe in your heart that it has to be tonight that will be your night of deliverance don't suspend it don't say i will listen today and wait till miracle service no let it be tonight some of you have been fasting and praying for days for weeks for months for years on certain stubborn and stringent issues in your life i want you to believe that today is that day you see the things of the spirit are engaged not by human force the bible says not by might nor by power but by my spirit that spirit is the spirit of wisdom and is here tonight so that you can truly experience the liberty of the sons of god in jesus name last week we started with a preview 12 signs that you are under satanic manipulation or if you put 12 signs uh, that you need deliverance whichever way you put it now there are many more signs to oppression to bondage to um, satanic manipulation and the likes there are many more signs but we had to just pull out these 12 because they are common to the human life that we can see these are things we can relate with on a daily basis i hope i'm not too quiet for you i prayed hard to be calm to teach today because i want you to get the truth amen so today we'll go deeper foundational deliverance somebody help that young man there amen in bracket you can put dealing with patterns and cycles now as i sat down by the spirit of god and began to write down by the help of the lord i began to write down the different aspects of deliverance that the word of god uh, talks about that believers should experience i discovered that i had primarily about six of them now if we are to take each that will take us about six sundays that's almost two months so i decided the holy spirit helping me and i pray he really helps us tonight to compress it together so we can just deal with them in bulk so today we are this this teaching is actually um a marriage of about three aspects so but we are just dealing with them because they are related amen you see <laughs> a true deliverance ministry is first of all solidly built on the word of god solidly built on the word of god a deliverance minister is like a doctor or better put is like a consultant when you go to a doctor and you are explaining to him what is wrong with you you will talk briefly and before you know sometimes he may even ask you this question this question you answer and then he just pulls out a sheet of paper and begin to make prescriptions for you then there are other times he may say okay you need to go for a test they, they didn't touch your body 
but just by looking at you and hearing what you say they can detect what is wrong but when you meet a consultant he goes way beyond what a doctor does a consultant deals with heart issues someone who has been well taught and has the experience of years in the profession in fact you don't even need to talk he can look at the samples of your results that other doctors have said they don't find any problem with he can look at the samples and tell them run this test again and then he's able to pick out what they cannot see not because those guys are not certified doctors but experience and knowledge has built stamina in the profession of this consultant that there are things he can see that an x-ray or a lab test you perform may not see now that's how deliverance is that you look at people spiritually look at certain happenings around their life and you can accurately predict that these things are not coincidences these things are induced by a third party and that this third party has satanic undertone behind it and then be able to prescribe what to do that brings deliverance that is why if you don't encounter a genuine deliverance ministry you will end up praying and laboring in vain am i talking to you because one of the one of the things i've, I've seen in recent times is I've had cases where people email me or text me from different places and about problems and they will tell you this is what they will say I've prayed I've fasted and I've sown seeds I've done sacrifice but the problem is still there now as an average Christian when you hear that what do you do that's what you would have prescribed isn't it so so the, but the anointing for deliverance allow you to go beyond what they have said to probe the process and sometimes you discover that the process that they followed to be delivered in court were wrong and that was because the process was wrong because the root of the problem was not discerned and dealt with so deliverance is first of all the ministry of deliverance is built first of all on solid revelation of the word of god and then a high tension anointing of the spirit of god because demons don't listen to english language demons respond only to one thing power and authority so i may be speaking to a few people amongst us here or online that if you at the time that there are issues in your life i didn't intend to start like this but god is taking us this way if there are issues in your life that you have prayed about you have fasted about you have done many things about many spiritual exercises and they still remain stubbornly and persist tonight you'll be set free because tonight we by the help of the holy spirit will go into the root of several things in people's lives and then we will by yourself with the light that is coming from the word of god you will probe the processes that you had attempted and discover that they were not appropriate and then come under the help of the holy spirit today to secure genuine deliverance listen to me when you are thoroughly delivered you have saved an entire lineage you have saved an entire ancestry certain things should stop with you and then your children and your children's children should start on a on a correct pedestal do you agree with me on that i told somebody this week i say i will fight all the battles before my children come I will deal with the demons even go to the future and look for the ones that are there and deal with them and come back amen so that when they come into this world the bible as applied in their life will be exactly as it says because let me tell you the truth the reason why you don't see certain things in scripture finding expression in your life even though you are a believer is because there are satanic entrenchments that need to be dealt with when you have thoroughly been screened by the ministry of deliverance 
you will discover that when God says a thing to you, it should happen automatically. Did you hear what I said? So can we journey? All right. Foundational deliverance. First of all, being that we are called as a ministry, Sons of Glory Network International, and our mandate is to bring the message of the kingdom, the power and the glory of God. The glory of God is the nature of God. The life of God that can manifest in flesh. The Bible says of Jesus that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory. Even the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. When Jesus was living on earth, his life was a display of what God looks like in flesh. So everything we call a superhuman quality was natural with his life because it was God manifesting in flesh. Now, a ministry saddled with that kind of revelation, why should we be talking about foundation, talking about demons, talking about spirits and all of that, sophisticated as our message is supposed to be? I want to show you a scripture before we get into the teaching tonight. In Acts chapter 7 in verse 2 and in verse 8, there's something about the nature of God that was discussed here. Yes, Stephen was making a defense or he was making a speech before the Jews. And Stephen began a prophetic narrative. And this narrative was how God met the forefathers of Israel. And the covenant that ensued that gave birth to the nation of Israel. And sowing it down or marrying it down to the coming of Christ. But then he mentioned something about the nature of God. Here's what he said. And he said, brethren and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father, Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran. Give us verse 8. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him. And on the eighth day, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. So here you see a God of patterns. The Bible called him the God of glory, but he appeared to a man and he began a covenant journey with that man and his descendants. So he is called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and who? And Jacob. And you see that the token of that covenant, which was circumcision, had to happen with every generation. Though he is a God of glory, he is yet a God of patterns. And he is also interested, he shows us that God is interested with genealogy. God is interested with ancestry. God is interested with roots. In fact, God's favorite name is called Father. What is Father? What does it mean? Father means source. It means progenitor. Isaiah 51 in verse 1 and 2. He says, look to the rock from whence you were hewn out. He said, look to Abraham and to Sarah who bore you. Is that what he says? He said, I the Lord called him alone and blessed him and made him great. So these two scriptures combined tells us that it is in the nature of God. It is consistent with God to be a God that is interested in origins, interested in foundations. As a matter of fact, God has never introduced any man in scripture without first of all exhuming the foundations of that man. Every time you look at scripture, whether New Testament or Old Testament, even Jesus Christ in the New Testament, in Luke chapter 3, after he was baptized, when you read from verse 23, 24, down to the end of that chapter, he began to trace the genealogy of Jesus. Just in case you feel that if you are in Christ, you are a new creature, there is nothing that has to do with your foundations. No. God is a God that is transgenerational in his dealings. God is a God that is, is, is a God of patterns and is a God that is interested in genealogy. If you are with me, say Amen. So the glory that can excel and be translated from one generation to another must first have a root point. So God is God of glory as much as he is a God of pattern. And you see, it takes patterns 
for the glory of God to manifest. In fact, let me put it in plain language so everybody understand. That spirits cannot operate in the tangible realm or in the realm of men without a negotiation of patterns. Patterns reveal the nature of spirits. In Exodus chapter 25 in verse 40, and then in Exodus chapter 40, if you read verse 18 to 19, and if you read verse 34 to 35, God instructed Moses to build the tabernacle according to pattern. Moses was taken in the spirit to heaven. He saw the heavenly tabernacle and God insisted that he replicated the same pattern. The reason was because God was going to come and dwell there. And the thing with spirits is, if a spirit must leave one dimension, the reason why we use the word dimension is because when you begin to talk about things that are esoteric, things that are astronomical, things that are beyond the tangible realm, you have to deal with them in dimensions. They don't exist on the same plane. That's what a dimension is. A dimension is a plane of existence or life. A dimension is not a level. Level is best expressed by a staircase. When you are walking on a staircase, you have from one step to another. That's a level. But a dimension is different. A dimension, for instance, if a level is going from one step on the staircase to another, a dimension may be using the elevator. When you use the elevator, you just change floors. But you can walk on eight steps on the staircase and you have not got to the second floor. So in the kingdom, the anointing moves in levels, but the glory operates in dimensions. Now that's how spirit operates. Spirit operates in dimensions, planes of existence. That means that not all spirits exist on the same dimension. That's why Jesus told the disciples, this kind goeth not out. That is the reason why for a spirit entity to be manifested on earth, or for a spiritual reality to manifest on earth, or for a spiritual civilization, a spiritual culture, a spiritual ability, or a spiritual technology. I hope I'm not too much for you. You know there are people watching us online, so some of them can understand. Alright? For you to bring something from the realm of the spirit into the physical, it just doesn't happen like that. A pattern must be created that suits the realm where that spiritual reality exists. In order, for instance, for you to prosper the kingdom way, there is a pattern that must play out in your life. One of it is that you must be a giver. That's why the Bible says that the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that waters shall be what? Water. But here comes a stingy man praying and crying to God to bless him. There is no pattern. So that thing, though it is a spiritual reality, but it cannot translate into his life. Because there is a pattern that must play out a model by which that operation can find expression. That is the reason why God insisted that Moses will build according to pattern. Because though he is the God of glory and the Bible tells us, that when he finished everything according to the pattern God gave him, the glory of God tabernacle, the same way spirits can enter the life of a man. Spirits can enter a family. Spirits can enter a bloodline. Who cares whether they are Christians or Muslims there? As long as a pattern, knowingly or unknowingly, has been created in that family, in that system, or in that individual's life, it is a license for that spirit to manifest otherwise why would jesus give a parable about how demon spirits operate and he says when an unclean spirit is casted out of a man am i boring you he says when an unclean spirit is casted out of a man he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none then he will say to himself i will go back to my house <laughs> who died for that person Jesus. But who is calling the person his house? A demon. Why? Because knowingly or knowingly to that person, I don't care whether he speaks in tongues. I don't care whether he went to Bible school and he has a reverend collar on his neck. Even if his name is Christian, 
and his son name is Michael in Jamaica. You know, say, let's not use Gabriel because you know Gabriel seems not to be a strong angel. Let's use, you know. <laughs> I was ministering to a man. He should be a general now in the army. A few years ago, I prophetically the Lord gave me his the name of his three children. And his three children, one was Gabriel, the other one was Michael, the other one was Raphael. Now, just because your three children, you can have them with those names, and they will be as stubborn as God knows how. You know why? Because there's something about patterns and the operation of spirits. So the reason why does that spirit calls that individual and when the bible uses the word house it's not just talking about a building alone no it's not just even talking about a human being alone when the bible uses the word house it's talking about a lineage the house of judah the house of jacob huh that's why the, the scripture we started with last year last week he says, but I will contend with him that contends with you. And I will save your children. Why your children? Because the spirit is in the house. But today, that spirit will be expelled. Now let's go into the teaching proper. Foundations. First of all, let me just briefly explain to us that foundation speaks about the origin, the base or the beginning of a thing. Foundation speaks about the origin, the base or the beginning of a thing. Foundations describe or talk about the core aspect or the formation or the formative stage of a particular thing i will not do too much of defining that word because i know many of us will understand what foundation means but in life it is important that i tell you today that there are about at least seven basic kinds of foundations in life if the foundation of a thing is the origin or the beginning of that thing then it is important that we understand that there are at least seven kinds of foundations number one is your lineage or your ancestry your lineage or your ancestry your lineage speaks about your biological foundation if you are with me say amen. amen number two your territory where you stay your environment and the community around you that is environmental foundation now your territory that territory has a history hundreds of years ago people were living there 500 years ago there were people living there what they did not only will affect them but will affect generations unborn that will survive in that environment there are certain environments that certain plant life plants cannot exist on is that true there are certain vegetables or plants that you can't plant everywhere There are certain animal species that you don't find in every part of the world. Your territory. Number three, your career or profession. That's another kind of foundation that you need to deal with. Your career or profession. Your career or profession. How does a man become a medical doctor we have a lot of medical professionals here and i believe that they will attest to what i'm saying or they will confirm what i'm saying if you want to be a medical doctor you don't just wake up one day wear a lab coat 
you know in secondary school in primary school they used to do what they call career day isn't it that a small child will go and wear lab coats and carry stethoscope I say I want to be a doctor I want to be a doctor and those days in you know in school they will bring professionals they'll come and encourage us ah it's, it's a wonderful thing to be a medical doctor this and that they didn't tell us how you will read when you get to the university if I remember one time they did career day in my secondary school they brought um, I schooled in Port Harcourt so they brought some people from Uniport brought some professionals like that so they brought this lady she read mechanical engineering she was looking so fine and touched and I felt like engineering was so easy that you can just look like that but those of you that are engineers amongst us then you know how far So for you to be a medical doctor, first of all, you have to make it to secondary school. And then in senior class, you have to be a science student. And make sure you pass those science courses in your SSC. Then after that, you write your matriculation exams. You get into the university. And then you are admitted into uh, the Department of Medicine and Surgery. When you begin... Don't think that all of a sudden they'll start teaching you how to inject people. They take you back in 100 level to do and go and do maths, do science courses. They don't believe that you still know it. Maybe you stay too much at home. So come and brush your brain a little bit. Then in 200 level, 300 level, they take you to the basic courses in medical science. Anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, a little bit of community medicine in 300 level. Uh which for many of them is a miracle when you pass then when you pass you go into clinical levels from 400 level you begin to deal with clinical uh, medicine you begin to deal with what what else again um, pharmacology all kinds of things and uh, when you finish all that you are tested to be a medical doctor yet they don't trust you so they send you for house job house job just means house boy amen because you are working in the hospital all through for one year practice very well a surgery will fail in your hand somebody will die in your hand next month another person dies in your hand and then you just get used to all the complications that comes with that and then to even go further there are exams so you see everything starts from a basic foundation before in a matter of years you can come out and say you're a consultant doctor so every career has foundations number four your marriage your marriage your home has a foundation in fact the bible says except the lord builds the house they labor in vain that that means any marriage that was not founded on the authority and the person of god is a disaster waiting to happen he said they labor in vain isn't it so you will labor but how in vain because something's wrong with the foundations number five your abode where you stay where you live your house your home is your family your house is where you stay it has foundations it was built on a piece of land you need to understand what kinds of transactions spiritually and physically had gone on on that land before you came you don't know whether that land was forcefully seized from a widow and she laid courses 20 years later you went and bought cheap land built your house and you are living in it but today god will bring deliverance Number six, your faith as a believer has foundations. Your spirituality. That's another kind of foundation. And then number seven, your calling or divine purpose. Your calling or divine purpose. So how many foundations did we look at just now? Seven.
foundational issues are very important issues that must be dealt with if a man must fulfill destiny and accomplish his divine purpose where you are going is determined first of all by where you are coming from how high a building is built is determined by the foundation the depths of his foundation in Psalms 11 verse 3, it says, If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous, not unbeliever? He say who? Who? Alright. So when a believer is fighting certain problems that are manifestations of foundational issues, the Bible says, as long as the foundations are attacked or are wrongly built what the righteous can do is limited that means that before you start out in life it is important that you try to examine and x-ray your foundations i've given you seven basics that you can go around and sit down and look at it is important that before you make a headway in life or a head start in life, you must understand where you are coming from. You must understand what is at the root of your calling, of your ancestry, where you, who you are biologically speaking. There are you must go to the foundation and examine to be sure if you are standing on a well-built foundation or if you are standing on something that was wrongly built and is a disaster before you step out to be an evangelist from your family you must first of all sit down and study the family you came from what is underneath in this family and how will it support a man of God in ministry very important very important it has nothing to do with your speaking in tongues it has everything to do with your understanding spiritual patterns you set out in life i want to be a medical doctor good jam score you got admission now you are in the university how many doctors have come from your family first of all ask yourself and by the time you study two three four five ten generations before you and you discover there is no medical doctor what you have are herbalists native doctors then you are ready for the opposition that may come your way as you're on that course because anything that must first manifest will have to manifest by the principle of breakthrough is that true Many of us are suffering from battles. We don't even know that these battles are only symptoms of an improper, a wrong, a faulty, an evil, or perhaps even a satanic foundation. Are you with me? In Matthew chapter 19 and in verse 8, Matthew chapter 19 and in verse 8, here is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees, answering a particular question. The question about divorce and marriage. There's just one sentence in that verse that I want to pick. It is at the end of the verse. It says, but from the beginning, it was not so. So divorce did not exist at the foundation of marriage. Why are we having divorce issues in families in our world today? irrespective of race of tribe or religion christians are divorcing muslims are divorcing buddhists are divorcing hindus even traditional people so for you to deal if you now come into a family where you see divorce rampant now you may not have there are families where people may not literally go to the court and divorce but out of five people who are married in that family three are separated because that's the end of divorce separation isn't it and now your own marriage is in crisis and the thing is you don't even understand where or what the problem is between you and your wife that's because you have not probed into the foundation jesus said from the beginning it was not so however 
it came in somewhere for the Jews. He said Moses permitted them to write the certificate of divorce. Why? Because of the stubbornness of their heart. So the problem of divorce within the Jewish race started with their forefathers. But as an institution, marriage, God never institutionalized divorce underneath it. In Matthew chapter 13, in verse 24 to 28, Jesus gave a parable of the wheat and the tares. He said, a good man went to sow good seed in the field. But while men slept, the Bible says the enemy came and sowed tares. His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And then when they rose up, the servants discovered that there were tars among the wheat weeds have grown were already there and they, their discovery was not immediately the bible says when the wheat grew and began to produce so probably the discovery came months after or weeks after that is the reason why a young man from age 0 to 25 his life has been going smooth there's been no problem but now that he decided he wants to get married, all hell breaks loose. The tars didn't attack immediately they were sown. The Bible says they waited for the wheat to begin to produce. That means that when you come into transitional stages of your life, or when you come into stages of your life where it is necessary that you begin to produce some form of fruit if it is marriage maybe you begin to produce children if it is your career that you begin to bear fruit in your career you become something after a long time of studying in school when you are close to a transitional season of your life that is when you find foundational issues manifest so your approach to towards foundational uh, you know transitional i beg your pardon your approach towards transitional seasons of your life should be highly spiritual you don't joke at that time just because you watched it on screen home video somebody just met his wife on a bridge One was going to commit suicide, the other one was going to commit suicide, and they saw themselves, and they encouraged themselves, they exchanged number. Eight months later, they are married. You say, okay, my own will be like that. No. That story was created by somebody. Life is such that you will have to create your own story. Transitional seasons. Transitional seasons. Somebody gets to final year and he keeps coming back three years, four years, five years for one course. Why didn't it happen when he was in 100 level? Why not in two? Why not three? Why not four? Why not five? Why now? You never had a problem with your body. You got married. Three years later, no child. And as you are going for medical examination, they tell you that you've had a fibroid growing in your womb. How long? The last five years. Where was it? He said, when the wheat grew and began to produce. When you became born again, nothing happened. When God called you and revealed to you the call of ministry, nothing happened. When God said, start. That's when people who promise you all of a sudden begin to run from you. That's when people who said they will stand by you all of a sudden they are not picking your calls. God showed you great visions. You started. Now, two years later, you can't grow your membership beyond 10. Why? You are praying. You are fasting. You are studying the word. You are living in integrity. There is nothing wrong with what you are doing. But there is everything wrong with your foundation and foundational issues only manifest during transitional seasons another thing i want to pick from that parable is that the bible says that first of all when the servants noticed that they were tars they asked the master they say you sold good seed who came and sold all these bad ones the master said an enemy has done this then they asked him a very interesting question i want you to watch this they said, should we go and uproot the tars from the wheat? The master said, no. Do you know why? 
because in the interpretation of that parable the enemy was the devil and the devil is a spirit yes or no the reason why the master did not allow the servants to uproot the task was because what was institutionalized by a spirit it will take a spirit to undo what was done by a man it will take a man to undo he said leave it to the time of the harvest he said and i will send in my reapers in the interpretation of the parable the reapers are who angels angels are who ministering spirits so what a spirit started it will take another spirit to undo what a man started it will take another man to undo now you are anointed you are blessed god loves you but it looks as if god is watching you suffer the way you suffer from things that are foundationally constituted not because god does not want to deliver you but because at this point what you are suffering from was entrenched by a human and God has been waiting for someone, another human from that lineage to stand up and undo. This night, you will undo everything that was planted. Whatever was not planted by God in your life will be uprooted in the name of Jesus. The first two years when we started ministry, this ministry, one of the things I did the most was prayers. I prayed till my body my body had to like it because I knew that I was I was going to deal with a lot of foundational issues first of all I was going to deal with foundational issues from my bloodline because what God had shown me and what he wants to do is global and I have not seen anybody from my lineage that has done anything global so i was going to become first born by destiny and the bible says it is the first born that open it number two i was going to deal with foundational issues from the territory i stay any land that has drunk blood because of violence or war eh, is a hard land it is difficult to prosper there naturally any land that has swallowed blood because of violence because of war because of anything whatsoever the, the natural state of that land has been altered altered completely so by natural means you can't prosper there you will have to be sponsored by a supernatural means and you know what has happened in this land in fact in my in those two years of praying i began to study ministry study enterprises study business and i discovered that it is hard to find you go and do the research i give you one month do the research and come back it is hard to find a business that prospers in this place where we are in eh? and exceeds 10 years with a territorial Mr. Biggs was in this land, she. Where is he today? That's just an example. I wanted to say something, but I can't say it here. Maybe the people will be here. I don't know. So I will just keep going. So I, he was not running to preaching. No, 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 no. We have to stay and begin to deal with foundational issues. We have to stay and examine it very well. I don't want to start a journey in destiny and my leg is hooked somewhere. I don't want to start and die somewhere. Jesus said any man that must build a tower must first of all sit down. He didn't say build a house. You can build a bungalow without doing that. He said but if it's a tower you want to build. He said you must sit down and count the cost. Lest you stop halfway and it becomes reproach and shame. It would have been better you didn't start. Somebody say foundations. Can I go on more? If you examine the captivity of the children of Israel, why was it so difficult to get them out of captivity and bondage from Egypt? They stayed 430 years. There were other times when Israel was sold into captivity. 
when you read the Bible very well, if you read the book of Judges, there were several times when they were sold into captivity. But their deliverance seemed to be easy. One battle and that was it. But why was it that the captivity in Egypt was so strong that it had to engage spirits? You are sending a man to deliver the nation of Israel from a strong nation like Egypt. I thought you would send him with a, an army of people. I thought you would send him with sword and spear. What did he tell Moses in Exodus chapter 4? He said, take that rod in your hand. When you, when, when you see a man going to fight a heavily armed enemy with a rod, then he's, he has weapons that are not physical. In Exodus chapter 30, when you read Exodus chapter 30, is it 30 or 29? In Exodus chapter 29, when you read verse 2 and 3, the prophet Ezekiel was making a prophetic declaration to Egypt, was prophesying against Pharaoh. And here's what he had to say in, in verse 2. Sorry, in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 29, in verse 2 to 3. He was addressing Pharaoh, but another character showed up. And then I will link you back to what happened in Egypt and show you why the first plague was blood in River Nile. He says, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Who is he prophesying against? The king of Egypt. Which is who? Pharaoh. He says, Speak and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Pharaoh, king of Egypt. O great monster who lies in the midst of his rivers. Hold on, where did monster come in? That's because Egypt had a, a big river called River Nile. The country of Egypt, the nation of Egypt, as at that time, their economy depended on that river. They used it for irrigational purposes in agriculture. They used it for many things. They even used it for fetish means. In fact, it will interest you to know that the Bible tells us that this was how Moses was discovered. That Pharaoh's daughter went to take her bath in the river. Hold on. Pharaoh's daughter was a princess. As big as the palace of a king should be, can't they create bath systems or toilet there that the daughter of a king will go to the common river of a nation and go and take bath? That's because it was not ordinary bath. It was a, a ritual bath. Because the chief god of Egypt was domiciled in that river. The Bible calls him a great monster in the midst of the river. A serpent that was in the belly there. That's why the crown of Pharaoh was carrying a serpent there. And that's the reason why the first plague was that the river turned to blood. When the river turned to blood, it's not just because you are turning water to wine. No. The river turns to blood because something dies inside. The first plague was God dealt with that monster first. He killed him. But we didn't see it in Exodus. It took a prophet many years later to show us that when you find a strong dominance from a nation, what they call world power is not by the amount of nuclear weapons you have, that there are altars and shrines underneath. Many of the world leaders you see, they belong to all kinds of fraternizations. You, you, you don't understand. So the first play was go and deal with that monster, first of all. Somebody say foundations. It is important that you address foundational issues if you must chart a new cause to destiny. Foundational matters and their effects are sustained through patterns and cycles. Foundational matters and their effects are sustained so if something was entrenched at the foundation of a family, of a business, of a career, of a ministry, of a calling, whatever, it is sustained year after year, generation after generation through two things, patterns and cycles. What is a pattern? A pattern is a tailored way of happenings. A tailored way of happenings. A pattern is a continued systematic occasion. We've done it before, so I don't need to read it for you to write. It's a continued systematic occasion, event headed in the same direction. 
a systematic kind of occasion in other words the same thing happening headed towards the same direction when it happens it will lead to this when it happens it will lead to this that is a pattern it is important to note and to realize that the instance of an activity or an event may be called a coincidence even though in the realm of the spirit there is no coincidence in the realm of the spirit you call it an act because it obeys the law of cause and effect nothing just happens or something doesn't just happens like that anything that happens was caused by something anything that happens is an effect to the cause of something so when an activity happens once you can call it a coincidence or an act but when it happens again and again it becomes what a pattern 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 can i give another example of a pattern in scripture there was a pattern of untimely death in the lineage of judah great prophecies came on judah he says unto him shall the gathering of the people be he said the scepter shall not depart from judah nor a lawgiver from it. judah was made to be the king among the tribes he described judah as a lion that's, that lies down and is crouched and no one can on on you know on you know what's the word he used there disturb it or something like that yet there was a pattern of untimely death in genesis chapter 38 i believe when you read the bible says judah got married to a canaanite woman that was the first mistake and then he gave back to three children when the firstborn married a wife the firstborn died without any child the second born the same thing died no child the third born for some reasons maybe didn't get married to that woman judah himself got married to the woman or slept with the woman and produced a seed and that pattern of untimely death continued such that generations later when david was to be anointed king as soon as david was anointed king saul began to look for him to kill him in fact to show you that it was a spiritual pattern that was at work when david caught saul you remember the story when david spared his life saul went to kill him and then saul slept and david caught his robe and showed him i said ah, if i wanted to kill you i would have killed you but how would i kill the lord's anointed saul said ah say i have done evil today in fact you are righteous he said i will not pursue again he went back next chapter saul is looking for him again you know why a pattern a spirit is involved you see when you are dealing with spiritual patterns using the energy of the flesh is of no use it's no good it's not something that you can by a habit conquer or stop no you need to engage something more powerful than the natural because you are that spirit may be age long older than any descendant from that family and because of that untimely death he pursued david for 13 years even when his killer died people were still looking for him he became king many years later his own son rose up to kill him and you know what that pattern of untimely death continued his first son died untimely Ammon, absalom died adonijah just because he declared that he will be king adonijah was supposed to be king humanly speaking he was the next after everybody died and so he gathered people together gathered some trusted people and began to say it is my turn to be king and began to celebrate just like when somebody say it is my turn amen so it's not the first time for you to say it's my turn somebody has said it's my turn before and just because he said it is my turn what happened the day of his inauguration he died wait oh let me continue my message <laughs> i don't know what you are i don't know why you are shouting there. god is not done with nigeria just hold on God is not done. What we need to do is pray. God is not done. God is not done. 
what will happen this year it will forever be in the history books of nigeria it will be like 1960 independence that's how it will be stamped in the history of this nation where was i So that pattern of untimely death continued. That's why when Solomon became king, what did he do? The first thing he did, he went and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings. Let the bulls die the death I should die. And the Bible says for 40 years of his reign, there was peace in Israel, even with his enemies. Foundations. What is a cycle? A cycle is a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. A series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. Within or at a particular period of time. A series of events. It's like a pattern that is a series of events. It's just that there are two differences. The first difference is in time. Time. A cycle happens at a particular time. A particular period of time in the existence of that individual or that thing or that family time that is the reason why seasons come in cycle to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven rainy season has a time isn't it pattern can happen anytime but raising season seasons are cycles and they have a particular time So you find in some families a cycle of death. At a particular time of the year, someone dies. I heard the story of, I think I heard this story from a man of God who was giving about Bishop Wale Oke. He said that Archbishop Benson Idaosa prayed for Wale Oke. Bishop Wale Oke is the national president of PFA and imparted on him. That same day, he got a call from UCH, that's University of College Hospital Ibadan the hospital there about somebody who was paralyzed and it happened to be that this person who was paralyzed was from a church where in that church every year somebody will fall ill admitted to that hospital and would die before the end of the year that was a cycle are you seeing that and then he released the word and the person that same day by 1 a.m. in the morning stood up and began to walk and was healed in fact certain witchcraft or in fact witchcraft operations are always with patterns or cycles mostly cycles so the difference is number one time is attached to cycle number two difference is that patterns are transgenerational cycles are generational cycles may happen within a family in a particular generation may happen in a particular church or ministry but patterns are transgenerational they cut across so when you find a particular scene plaguing a family check their history there must be a pattern of such that is repeated Now, I discovered that there are seven, seven things when you are dealing with foundational issues, foundational problems or afflictions. When you are dealing with problems or afflictions that are foundational, that means that they will either manifest as patterns or as cycles. There are seven things that I've discovered that sponsor or facilitate their consistent operation. If you find a particular affliction in your family, I've had to pray for somebody that in their family there was a pattern of uh, what you call this respiratory condition, asthma. Even in medical science, they will ask you if it is hereditary, they want to know. When you find a pattern of anybody that must give birth, must go through operation in a family, you are dealing with what? A pattern. That's an affliction. 
that's an affliction I discovered seven things that sponsor of well foundational afflictions seven things that sponsor or sustain of well foundational afflictions so that affliction continues or that problem lingers because of one of any of these seven do you want to know them number one sexual immorality I hope you not stand up and go home at this point let's talk about it first sexual immorality or bondage sexual sin is a very 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 intricate and extensively a very disastrous sin because the Bible says that every sin is done outside the body but sexual immorality is done to the body so sexual immorality is you sinned against two different people you sinned against God and then you sinned against your body first sexual immorality is simply any sexual activity that is unnatural or that is beyond the boundaries that God has set for instance sexual intercourse God has set it to happen between the, within the boundaries of marriage when two people are lawfully married under God it is legal for them to have intercourse in fact it becomes a blessing it leads to their bonding together spirit soul and body it leads to their producing children are you hearing me in fact it also leads to a transference or a communication of spiritual realities if a man who is anointed marries a woman after a while especially if the two of them remain faithful to their marriage you will begin to find the same anointing manifesting in the woman whether she fast or not why the two shall become one but if an activity such as that happens outside of marriage it becomes illegal it becomes immoral and so the bible paul was speaking in first thessalonians chapter 4 he says that this is the will of god your sanctification that everyone should avoid sexual immorality and know how to possess his own body in cleanliness he said for god has not called us unto immorality but to holiness sexual immorality don't only be scared of it because of disease std sexually transmitted diseases there are also sexually transmitted demons covenants are entered into when two people have intercourse whether you like it or not because there is a mixture of blood and water there and i don't want to tell you where the water is coming from where the blood is coming from because that's not my time yet there is a union there spiritually and soul wise a part of you people have shared one another a part of that person is into you and you are into that person so if that person comes from a lineage that is suffering from a transgenerational affliction or a cycle or a foundational problem you have covenanted yourself to become a partaker of it whether you believe it or not and it is it is worse when it doesn't manifest instantly somebody says, okay eh, it's just intercourse now I didn't I didn't perform the act masturbation is also sexual immorality um, next week I'm going to deal with that more what you call it pornography is also immorality anything that is unnatural around that place God will forgive the individual of the sin but the consequences will come on the individual because the Bible says in Romans 6 23 that the wages of sin is what death sin is an action it will obey the law of cause and effect yes God will forgive you by not holding the sin against you but your action is going to require that a consequence you have sown so it must be reaped that one god will not stop it not because he want, he doesn't want to stop it for you to suffer but it's because you indulge in it lawfully 
you created an action that must spark a reaction you have to believe me this night because i have i have seen situations where people get married they played when they were single played very well you understand what i mean by play that when it was close to when they would get married they became serious with god and they didn't go back to examine the foundations of what they did and address it spiritually so that the consequence does not come on them why did god say i will contend with him that contends with you and i will save your children he's contending with you not your children yet god say i will have to save your children because if you are a lawful captive there is something you have done that gives the captor or the oppressor a right and then the lady gets married and she can't take him or she takes in and miscarriage and if you are a pastor if you don't have a third eye you will labor and fast not knowing the root of an issue when i began to do counseling one of the gifts i had to pray for more was discernment of spirit in fact any day i would do counseling that day i'm high in spirit because you can't tell the root of a problem you can't tell where it's coming from years ago they brought a lady to me had problems in her relationship good girl if you see her well dressed and all night spiritual she can speak in tongues in your case now you just go and pray against you see, every problem with your relationship die by fire <laughs> Or you at best just psychologically encourage and say, okay, maybe those men are not meant for you. Are you sure? They are not meant for you? When we began to pray, God opened my eyes. And God showed me that it was a pattern. First of all, when she was very young, years ago, when she was a toddler, somebody abused her sexually. And when the Lord showed me that vision, instantly I was seeing her in her house that day. That, this is as we are praying. Oh. And as I was seeing her in her house, I saw something black like a shadow walked into the house and entered into her. And God said, that's the spirit of rejection and abuse. And it has trailed her. As, as she was looking at me, she had had five failed relationships. Three amongst those men are Muslims. The Bible says without revelation, without vision, a people perish. That's the root of the problem. There's no need to, for you to counsel and say, no, then don't worry, just wait, your man will come now lie. There's a spirit that came in. And if care is not taking that girl can remain. You know, Satan wants to keep people perpetually bound till they are destroyed. She can remain like that till 50 years. And guess what? She will still be going for night vigils. She will still be praying. She will still be sowing seeds. Till she's tired and frustrated. Then she believes that God and Christianity is a scam. It doesn't work. Why? Because of what she has gone through. And then ultimately she will decide, I'm done with all this and goes into the world and all of a sudden things will start working for her there lawful captive so it, when you are doing the wrong thing satan will not disturb you it's when you want to do the right thing that all hell breaks loose today you will experience freedom yeah. sexual immorality is one number two spiritual marriages seven things that sponsor well foster or facilitate foundational afflictions or problems number two spiritual marriage believe it all there are spiritual marriages what is the token of a marriage the union of sex so you may not see that you are married to a spirit invisibly as it were but when you go to sleep and in your dream somebody comes and fulfill the right of a husband or a wife something is wrong in fact demonic technology has advanced now as i study that you don't even need to see anybody in the dream you just wake up and know something has happened do you know that one or you you you, you see yourself in your dream you are putting on wedding gown and you are standing with somebody and you can't see the person's face now i'm not saying that all those dreams are wrong but you know to a large extent to a large extent i can give you one sign to know that a dream is demonic every time you are interfacing with an individual in that dream 
and the things happening there are not too good no, in fact they are not good there is nothing like too good or not they are not good and you cannot see the face of the individual or you are seeing the face of somebody who is very close to you that you know will have nothing to do with that activity you are, that's a demonic dream that's a familiar spirit operating spiritual marriage some women will never get married not because they are not good they can cook they love God they can pray in tongues they are physically beautiful but they are married to a spirit and every time a man comes around them and says I want to marry you the spirit comes to fight because the Bible in the Bible speaks of the jealousy of a husband in the book of numbers the spirit will come to fight It's either the man's business begin to go down to destruction or the man becomes confused somebody proposed to you and put a ring in your finger on Valentine now he's not picking your call is it that the love changed instantly or what spiritual marriages some pastors with all due respect are married to spirits so no advancement in ministry it's true I'm telling you the truth some business people they are married to spirits every time a big deal is about to come or you're about to make a good sale business is about to become stable you have an encounter in your dream in the night and then a cycle is initiated again why will nobody seem to rise beyond this particular level as far as career is concerned in your family could it be and you know one thing with spiritual marriage spirit spouses they are not just real they are transgenerational as i study them those are the real captors they live in the ancestry they live in the bloodline so they want to marry themselves and connect covenant themselves to everybody within the generation one generation after another whether you are in london whether you are in australia melbourne australia uh, whether you are in ottawa canada and then the last born is in abuja one by one they know where to visit and when to visit sometimes they use the face of people you know they use the face of people in your family spiritual marriages as long as that spiritual marriage is existing that affliction will continue but today 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 god will bring an end to that union in the name of jesus number three satanic altars and shrines are you blessed at all are you happy you came tonight let's continue satanic altars and shrines the moment i mentioned this some of you just started laughing because you know that's why you have not gone to your village in the last eight years i i heard the story of a, a man <laughs> i heard the story of a man who came from a very diabolical background and you know there's poverty people the, the the altar and the spirits in that background and there were witches too there they will not allow anybody to rise so the guy traveled very far and he became you know god blessed him somehow he bought a car and he was doing well when he wanted to go to the village to visit them in the village he drove his car to a village the village before his village he stopped there put all that he had in the car he came down wore tattered clothes and trekked to his village and when he met he met was he his father or his uncle when he met them, he said ah where your car he said no i don't have any car he said you're not praying for me things are too hard things are not working they say uh uh go bring your car come now he was still there struggling then they took a bowl and poured water inside made some incantations and they showed him where he parked the car that's demonic technology see let me tell you the <laughs> all the limitations of science and natural technology in this realm eh, is a possibility in the realm of the spirit a spirit can touch your car and it doesn't matter the mechanic you take it to the mechanic will get tired of you i've seen that live oh. i've seen it happen satanic altars and shrines what do you do against that you need to pray what i call desolation prayers in first kings chapter 13 the bible said god sent a prophet when the king of israel B 
built an altar against foreign gods god sent a king uh, a prophet and he went to prophesy against the altar desolation that the altar will be scattered anyone there that an altar or a shrine from your village or where you come from has been speaking against the inhabitants of your family today it will be destroyed into pieces in the name of jesus christ number four bury charms and satanic deposits bury charms and satanic deposits bury a charm in a house and they can't complete that house they can't complete the building satanic deposits any man that begins to engage in charms deposits you are already inviting you know foundational afflictions to be sustained i knew the story of a, a, a commissioner of one state in nigeria years ago as soon as they made him commissioner he came to the office the first day he came to the office on monday he saw something on his seat you know what that is that's welcome you are welcome we are glad you came i know of another commissioner sorry not a commissioner a government a, you know officer a very strong financier in his church and then god decided to bless the church by making him a special advisor to his governor about a month or two months after becoming a special advisor as i was told this story paralysis came till today and you know what that means it means that the salary that he's getting and all the benefits from government that should have been used to help the church and help people around him will go to what his treatment that's foundational issues charms deposit some of you have family members who have been building a house in the village for 12 years what kind of money have they not pumped in fact i was praying for a man a military senior military officer one night and the lord opened my eyes and i saw an uncompleted building in another state and i saw them doing some things there and i called him i said sir the enemies are after you say eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know they will not believe they think you're after their money i say wait oh, do you have a building in so so state and this is the state of the building say hey apostle yes so oh. yes so oh. yes so oh. i say stop building it it's under attack stop for one year there are things we need to do guess what that was the last call till today i don't know if he has built it charms deposits number five And tonight, anything that has been buried in the ground against you will command the earth to vomit it. Amen. Number five, placenta and hair bondage. <laughs> placenta and hair bondage. Women will agree with me. I don't know if they do it now. Maybe our women now, they are so modernized. But in those days, our mothers, in the generation of our mothers, they are very careful about what you do to the placenta of their child. Right, mommy? They have to know who is going to bury it. They bury it, isn't it? Do you know why? Humanly speaking, you may just say, well, the placenta was used to connect the mother to the child for the purpose of nutrition. And now that the child is born, there's no need. But can I tell you something? That placenta, you see, is a spiritual gate between one life to another life because nutrition and life passes through it from the mother to the child so whatever is done with your placenta whether you believe it or not whether you went to school in oxford or not can affect you, you, I, oh, you the realm of the spirit has no respect for your degree or where you did even i did it in manchester do it in manchester do it in oxford go to harvard and do two degrees the realm of the spirit remains on top i'm telling you even in science your hair they can use it to do a dna test and determine maternal parentage or maternal parentage if they can do that with science how much more spiritually they can use the hair of a person to control the destiny placenta is a gate and whatever happens to that gate affects the destiny your hair is like your glory that's why in first corinthians 11 we say when a woman is prophesying 
I'm praying she should not cover her head. Head, not hair. Go and read your Bible again. Not head. Not hair. Head, head. In the same chapter, I say, for the hair of a woman is a covering. And in the realm of the spirit, the word covering can also connote glory. For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory. And why is it the next thing? You lift out my head. Number six, satanic decrees, causes, satanic decrees. I had the story of a father when his daughter was 14 years. She did something and he was angry. And he said, if I am your father, your womb will never carry a child out of anger that's why you have to be careful what you say in your anger be careful what you even do in your anger those days in my secondary school we used to have a guy if that guy is angry it's as if he's a spirit he can lift anything if he's angry he can lift anything i, I mean it he can lift anything he can lift something that is almost the same weight as him and throw it I said that one is demonical. Then we I didn't know it was demonic, but now I know it's demonic. And this lady got married many years later. Miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. Why? Somebody placed a decree, a curse. A family, somebody rose up, an evil person spoke to the first son of a man. He said, I know you are supposed to go abroad, but you will never go abroad. Years later, the son wanted to travel. On his way to the airport, he had an accident and broke his leg. They took him to the hospital. Six months, finally became well. They decided he tried again. When he got to the airport, they entered the plane. While they were preparing to take off, he started convulsing, vomiting. They had to take him out of the plane for medical attention, and the plane took off. As soon as they take him out, uh, took him out and the plane took off, he became fine. The third time he struggled and landed there. Two weeks later, they deported him back. Satanic decrees. Anybody that has spoken, and you know the thing with decrees, maybe they spoke it against your mother, they spoke it against your grandmother, and now you are suffering for no just cause. You were not the one that offended them, but now you are suffering from it. But today, every satanic decree against your life and destiny, we cancel it by the blood of Jesus. I said we cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Sit down, I'm rounding up now. Number seven, blood covenants and incisions. Blood covenants. That, that, all these people that go to malams, malams, be careful. In fact, if you have gone to a malam and you are here, you need deliverance. When we start praying, please pray. It's not an insult. It's a statement of fact. You need what? Deliverance. Even if the Baba didn't consult, you stepped your leg there. I mean it, if you are here and you have been to a malam before, this night has to be your night of the... You, whether you believe it or not, something is following you. Incisions. I know the story of a young man who was a Muslim and there were witches in his family. And so he did everything for protection. One time he went to a herbalist and they made 32 incisions on his head with razor. Imagine tearing somebody's head with razor. Then they put black powder, put some. <laughs> That's why I can't serve the devil. God is easier. I can't serve the devil. A man went to a native doctor with his friend to do blood money. He wants to do rituals to get money. And then they told him, come so so day. When he came, the native doctor gave him a razor blade, 10 razor blades. He said, eat all of them and swallow. He wanted to travel abroad, sorry. And while he was there still contemplating, a lady stepped forward and swallowed everything. No, I'd rather serve God. God's way may be gradual. I will wait. Swallow is a blade. Some of you, as you are laughing now, you know what I'm talking You have friends. You know. You know. You know the places they've gone to. Blood covenants. 
Blood covenants can you know the highest sacrifice in them is blood. Blood. It, it sponsors foundational afflictions. It makes it continue for as long as possible because that covenant is there. The person will still speak in tongues and pray. In fact, the person may be filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesy. Eh? That one, that operation happens by another law in the spirit realm. But the law of covenant has already been obeyed. And because of that, that individual is a lawful captive. Some of us, respectfully speaking, we come from lineages where all kinds of covenants were made. Even you, you remember when you were five, they mixed blood with something and gave you to swallow. And you didn't know why. Now you are 25 years. You are a born again Christian. You think that nothing happened there simply because you have confessed Jesus Christ. Yes, spiritually you are free from that. But that, that operation was entrenched on the law. And God is so just a God that anyone that understands the laws of the realm of the spirit can manipulate it to suit him. And God will not hold him responsible because he is on the advantage because what he is doing is legally done. It's a law. It's a law. Are we ready to pray this night? Just five, ten minutes we are going to pray and address some foundation. I will not be surprised if some people vomit here. No, I don't like vomiting. But deposit will come out of some people this night. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So how do I deal with foundational issues? How do I address foundational issues? Or how can I experience foundational deliverance? Because these are things that are at your root. They, were, they are things that are legally done. Some of them, you came and met them. For some, you entered into them when you were an unbeliever. Now you are a believer, yet it's still disturbing you. There's always a way with God. Number one, you must admit that you need deliverance. With all that I've spoken tonight and many more that I can, but for the want of time, you should be able to x-ray your life. And if you find one or more of any of these happenstance, don't try to shake it off. Don't try to be smart or try to just admit that you need deliverance. You see, this that trying to put up a reputation that this message is for other people not for me when you know inside of you that some of these signs are manifesting in your life or your family it is it is it is it is you are just helping the devil keep you in perpetual captivity you have to admit deliverance will never will never happen except the individual wants to be delivered you must admit that yes from my biological foundations or perhaps this, my relationship life, why it's not working, is because there was a time I had something to do with a lady, and it was a covenant we entered into, unknown to us. But right now I know it's a covenant, and it's responsible for what I'm going through. You must admit you need deliverance first. First, That's why young people like myself, let me talk to you. Before you get married, eh? settle foundational issues first. If you think marriage is an escape, you think that there's problem in the family. Let me just get married and escape from this family. <laughs> Continue. When you get married, the spirits will go there and find a room for themselves. You must address it. You must address it. You must address it so that your people, your children will not come and be a part of it. And it starts by admitting that you need help. Admitting that you need you're in need of deliverance. Number two, you must repent. This repentance will be on behalf of yourself and your people. There are many times, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7.14, If my children that are called by my name shall humble themselves, my people, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Many times when Israel were lost from God in captivity and they needed revival and restoration as a nation, they had to repent. Repentance is not only for unbelievers. Repentance is also for believers. You may not have caused it, but you are now a victim of it because somebody in your lineage, particularly if you are from Africa, 
in places like Europe, America, all of those places. In America, their founding fathers made a covenant with God. They entered a covenant with God. That's why no, even if Illuminati spreads around the 50 states of America, even if you find all kinds of nonsense there, God still has a heart for America. You know why? The foundations. It was with God. In Europe, you have men like Charles Finney, John, G, uh, uh, Charles, Charles, Charles Wesley, John Wesley, all of those men. John Knox. They prayed their entire continent into a covenant with God. But in Africa, what did our forefathers do? They served Shongo. They served Ogun. They were killing twins, shedding blood. They say Mary Slesso came and stopped it. She stopped it, yes. She stopped the action. But the consequences, was it dealt with? No. The gospel they brought that time was believe in Jesus and you are saved. They didn't teach us how to deal with foundational issues. Their gospel didn't bring deliverance because they didn't need deliverance. Am I talking to somebody? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't just pretend and say, well, I'm a pastor now. No, no, apostle. Well, when we start praying now, you see, most times, the people that need deliverance, respectfully speaking, they are the ones that are always bossy during prayers. Say, I'm a man of God, a whole man of God like this. You had better do it, though. Do you want to labor for 25 years and see nothing? You had better deal with it now. The second step is to repent. Those are the kind of, usually when you when you go into such kind of prayers you start by bringing repentance for yourself and for your father's house or for your mother's house because they sinned someone has to atone for that sin yes the blood of jesus has been shed but someone a human from that family has to atone some of them cost god some of them killed missionaries some of them sold human beings like themselves into slavery for a mirror. A mirror. Somebody has to. That blood is still speaking. That transaction is still crying before the justice system of heaven. That's why you are praying. But it looks like God is not answering. Not because God does not want to answer. But here you are on earth crying before God. Yet there is a case. Imagine when you have a court case and you are not in court. But this night we'll go to the court of heaven we will go there and every accuser that has been crying before your family it will be silenced by the blood of jesus number three how to experience foundational deliverance number three you have to contend aggressively in prayers you have to break the cycle and destroy the pattern psalms 18 verse 3 i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved so shall i <laughs> the only way is what prayer aggressive prayer if you have prayed and nothing happens pray more something will happen that's the only way there are prayers there are deliverances that cannot be done by another person there are prayers that you have to pray for yourself I wish that you can expel all demons by the anointing alone I wish as a minister I would have helped many people there are things that you have to do yourself look at what he says in Isaiah he says, I will contend with him that contends it's this is a fight that's not the kind of prayer you pray as if you are applying makeup that's a, a warfare prayer because until there is judgment until there is warfare there cannot be judgment and until there is divine judgment passed against the enemy there cannot be deliverance it was when god had dealt with and judged pharaoh and the, the children of egypt that israel was let free one time jacob made a proclamation against reuben he said you are my firstborn the excellency of my strength and might he said but as unstable as water you will be another man had to pray many years later he said let reuben live and not die prayers psalms 34 verse 4 to 6 he said i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from my fears they looked to him verse 5 and they were like their faces were enlightened and they were not ashamed verse 6 he said this poor man cried to the lord and he did what he saved him from all his troubles you have to cry you have to cry vehemently 
you have to pray passionately hebrews 5 7 he said jesus in the days of his flesh he prayed with strong cries to the to him that was able to save him from death you see that untimely spirit it came again for jesus so at 33 and a half years jesus died was it god that said he would die at 33 and a half years was it god that said he would do ministry for three and a half years you know that from when he started ministry they were looking for him to kill him many times they would have killed him it was the mercy of god why a pattern was was following him your lord jesus you had better believe this that's why these kinds of prayers when you notice these kinds of things you have to pray and when you pray you have to pray the right way you pray with spiritual intelligence go to the word of god and find out the counter current measure find out the the opposition the provision in the word of god that counters this happenstance that's why you must know the word of god you must pray blind prayers does not just solve it just because you cried and prayed does not mean it will be done no this is a legal case against you it's like a legal document you need a lawyer just because you are not guilty then you go to court alone and stand there and say i'm not guilty george oh no you need a lawyer that understands the law and can swing the pendulum of justice in your in your favor otherwise you will stand there and cry not guilty and they will sentence you are they not innocent people in prisons he said bring forth your strong reasons declare thou that thou must be justified when you notice a, a pattern of untimely death and as you pray god reveals to you that there was a human sacrifice done many years ago the next thing to do is to go to the court of heaven with prayers and when you are going go with understanding from the word of god first of all that the bible says that we have come to mount zion to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of abel so what will give your prayer volume and voice is your understanding of the word of god consigning the blood of jesus that is what you will use to counter that kind of affliction you pray many people pray and they, are, they don't see results because their prayer lacks spiritual intelligence the realm of the spirit is not a haphazard realm it is not 10 10 you know that game they used to play you don't do that in the, it's a very intelligent realm you must understand the word of God. He said, you know the grace, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So that through his poverty you will become rich. It is your knowledge of that grace that gives you an advantage. When you pray, you begin to insist that that which is written becomes a manifestation. If there is a transgenerational yoke in the family, ladies don't get married. One generation after another, you stand in prayer, knowing fully well that it is written in the word of God, that this proverb will not be used against it in Israel. He said that the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. God himself said in Ezekiel 18 from verse 1 to 4, he said, for all souls are mine, the soul that sins shall die. Therefore, father, my parents or my grandfather, was the one who perpetrated this we will not suffer for their sin that's the kind of prayer that can ascend to the heavens pray like that three four five days you begin to see reactions how long will you labor like this in vain how long will you keep praying blind prayers or worse of all how long will you not even pray at all you know when you mention prayer some people just give up you know what i'm doing these days now if you call me i have a problem i look for how you can pray that's what I do now. Yes. Tell the person, pray for three to five nights. When the person wakes up by 12, and it's for, he will not make, the first thing is he will, first of all, respect you as a man of God and know that it's not easy. Somebody say prayer. Can I show you one scripture before we pray? Job chapter 5 verse 6 to 8 and then down to 12. Our time is up. We have to pray at this point. Are you ready to pray? I don't know about you, but when I pray, the heavens begin to move. When we pray this night, the Spirit of God will arise for some people. Certain old covenants that were done with Satan many years ago, it will be revisited. And it will be annulled today, today today 
He said, for affliction does not come from the dust, nor does trouble spring from the ground. He said, yet man is born to trouble. This is foundational problem. Man is born to trouble. In other words, you were born to inherit trouble. This is foundation here. Go on. Ah, look at verse 8. He said, but as for me, I would seek my God. I will seek God. And to God, I will commit my cause. Somebody say, as for me. You know, I like God because you can decide what happens for your life. As for me, I will not complain about it. I will pray. Why do people not get married in this family? Everybody is complaining. What do you do? You pray. As for me, I will seek God. Somebody must know the answers. Go on. Verse 9 down to verse 12. Who does great... This is the God I want to seek. Who does great things and unsearchable. Marvelous things without number. He gives rain on the earth and sends water on the fields. He sets on high those who are lowly. So the affliction or the pattern has brought you down. The Bible says this God you want to cry to is able to set high those who have been brought down. And those who mourn are lifted to safety. He frustrates the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform or carry out their enterprise. Are you ready to pray? Stand on your feet. Clash the symbols for me, please. Listen. The final thing I didn't say was to surrender to the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, when when you begin to pray listen to me before we pray in fact i think i should take the altar call before we pray i think i should take the altar call now so please no movement now after the altar call we can we can permit for move i think i should take the altar call now because there will be no need for you to pray when you need to be reconnected to jesus when you begin to pray the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 Now the Lord is that spirit And where the spirit of the Lord is There is liberty When you pray You invoke the ministry Of the spirit of God You invoke the dimension of the anointing For deliverance and liberty It is the spirit of God that goes to work When you pray and his work is extended in your life by the ministry of angels that means that as we pray for some of you the spirit of god will open your eyes and begin to give you insight into the roots of certain issues in the family some of you may even have visions right now as we begin to pray some of you will be taken to your villages some of you will be taken to places some of you will be transported i'm telling you what will happen as you pray you will see where the transaction was made and by the help of the Holy Ghost, it will be broken and destroyed as we prayed. And then everything that was caused by those patterns or those cycles, all of, it, all of a sudden overnight will become a blessing. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Let me take the altar call before we pray. If you are here, everybody standing inside, outside. If you are here, you have heard the message and at some point you've been convicted. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you go to church, but you don't know Jesus truly as your Lord and Savior. Or perhaps, once upon a time you were born again. You even came out and make, made a public declaration for Jesus. But there are several things happening in your life, several patterns that are not of God. You know that you and God are not in good terms. You know probably you have compromised to temptations or several things have happened and right now you need to be restored you need to rededicate your life to God I want you to raise your right hand very quickly and then we will pray it is important that you settle the issue of salvation first it is important that you are restored and rededicated to God first before you begin to confront spirits before you begin to confront altars before you begin to confront foundational issues Paul said, henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark. Without that mark of the Lord Jesus, you have no right to confront any spirit. 
but tonight God wants you to be restored. While we all stand, if you are here, you want to give your heart to the Lord, or you want to rededicate your life afresh, please raise your right hand and I'll pray with you very quickly. Raise your right hand very quickly. God bless you. God bless you. I see a hand there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Another hand there. I see a hand there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Today is your day of salvation. Keep raising those hands. And if your hands are raised up, please come to the front quickly. Come as though you are escaping from a burning house. Come very quickly. Some of you are listening to me now and God is convicting you, but you are ashamed because of people. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you in the presence of my Father in heaven and the angels. If the Lord is convicting your heart now, please march to the front very quickly. Men may condemn you, but God is accepting you tonight. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. If you are following online and you want to make this decision, congratulations to you. I want you to pray with us as I pray with these ones before us. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Please make sure they stand in a single line. God bless you, God bless you. Can we stretch our hands towards them? And if your heart is still being convicted and you are in the congregation, please walk to the front. There's no need to be ashamed. There's no need to forget about who is around you. Settle it with destiny and surrender to the Lord Jesus. Stretch your hands in the congregation, those of you there, and pray for these ones. And those of us in front, please put your right hand on your chest. I want you to make these prayers with me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I've heard your word. I know that I need you and I thank you because you died for my salvation today I believe you as my Lord and Savior and I receive eternal life take away my sins and thank you for saving me in Jesus name now keep your right hand on your chest with your eyes closed. I want to pray for you. Father, they have confessed with their mouth. And they believe in their hearts. I therefore decree and declare that from today, these ones are saved. In the name of Jesus. I declare that their sins are forgiven and blotted out. That the handwriting against them that was written has been blotted out. By the blood of Jesus, I declare them born again. And I declare that they will serve you as your children. I pray, Lord, that you will seal them with your spirit of promise. Their lives will never remain the same again. Let your power rest upon them. And tonight, uproot every satanic entrenchment around their lives. Let them experience true liberty. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Put your hands down. Look at me. If you made this um, confession with us online, I congratulate you. You are now a child of God. Whatever platform you are watching from or you are listening to us or following us from, a number should be placed there. Our public relations line will be placed there so you can reach out to us and let us know that you made this decision so that we can encourage you to grow in the Lord. Those of you in front, God bless you. Please just move to your right, turn to your right. There is a counselor waving his hands. He will lead you to our counselors at the back and they will talk to you. Get your contacts and pray with you. Please celebrate them as they go. Can you celebrate God for souls? Are we ready to pray? We are going to cry to God. Foundational issues will be settled this night. Listen to me with all due respect. I come from a very God-fearing background. But one of the afflictions I noticed in my background was poverty. Poverty is not lack of cash, no. It's more than that. Even rich people, there are times where they don't have money. So they borrow. 
Poverty is worse than that. And interestingly, I discovered that I come from a lineage of priests. So it becomes a bigger reproach that people serve God in this family and they are not blessed. So in 2019, in 2020, I set up a prayer altar and I began to deal with these issues. I remember in 2020, I made a deal with God. Just listen to my story before we pray. When I moved into the house, I raised a covenant altar of prayers to God 10 hours every day for one year. A time came, something happened in my life, and my finances opened. And there are blessings I have seen in my life, with all due respect, that it probably looks like I am the first in my family to have it. Just in case you think the manifestation of blessings is car, just wait, it will come soon. Are you hearing me? But I have seen God do things in my life that I know that somebody at my age has no right to have it happened by prayer if you pray this night you will address some things in your lineage you will deal with some issues especially those of you that are called into ministry and after this night you will walk out of this place free are you ready to pray say after me in the name of jesus, in the name of jesus. say it again in the name of jesus in the name of jesus heavenly father heavenly father I come before you. I come before you. I have heard your word. I have heard your word. And I believe. And I believe that tonight. That tonight is my night. Is my night of deliverance. Of deliverance. Father. Father. I stand before you. I stand before you. I stand before your throne of mercy. I stand before your throne of mercy. I appear before the courts of heaven. I appear before the courts of heaven through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. And I ask, and I ask that every transaction, every transaction, every covenant, every covenant, every sin, every sin, every act of wickedness, every act of wickedness, every act of evil, every act of evil that has brought patterns, has brought patterns satanic patterns, satanic patterns, demonic cycles, demonic cycles in my lineage. In my lineage in my life, in my life affecting, ministry, affecting ministry affecting my family affecting my, family, affecting my, career, affecting my career affecting my rising affecting my, rising, affecting my, relationships, affecting my relationships tonight, tonight I, ask, I ask by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus let those patterns be destroyed, be destroyed. let the cycles be broken every spirit laying claim over me through any means tonight your end has come I severe every bond between me and every spirit I destroy every connection between me and transgenerational afflictions I destroy every connection between my life and foundational afflictions I disconnect myself from bloodline patterns from foundational issues let the cycles be broken let the patterns be destroyed let those evil spirits be gone tonight right now father as I pray show your power send deliverance over my life in the name of Jesus I want you to open your mouth and pray in the spirit for five minutes I want you to pray violently. I want you to cry passionately. Yes, the power of God is already touching. Help him.
in power and with your right hand you have dashed in pieces the enemy say unto God how terrible are thy works through the greatness of your power 
shall your enemies submit themselves. I'm about to pray for you now. And the power of God is going to descend on individuals, on families. Men are about to be set free right now. Is there anybody here with the name Judith? Judith. 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 You are here and your name is Judith. Is there anybody like that here? Judith, I want to pray. Lift your hands. God is showing me international doors opening for some people. And because of that, I want to pray and address things in your foundations. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone here. Anyone that is suffering because of a faulty foundation. Because of an evil foundation. From your bloodline. From your family. From the territory where you are in. Foundations from any sort whatsoever. That is faulty and has affected the destiny of men. Right now by the power that rose Jesus from the grave. And by the power of the God that created all things. I declare you disconnected from those foundations. I disconnect you from those foundations. Every evil root that was buried in the ground. Every charm, every deposit of darkness that was planted in the earth against your life, against your destiny, against the members of your family, and that has plagued your advancement. I command, the Bible says in Jeremiah 22, 29, O oh, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 16, that the earth helped the woman. I speak to the earth, and I command, let it be formated right now. Every evil deposited in the earth against you be vomited now and be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I come against satanic altars. I come against satanic shrines that are in the bloodline. Now the power of God will hit some people here. Anyone that is a victim of a satanic altar, I don't care where it was raised. I don't care by any means which it was raised. Right now, I command those altars to catch fire. I command those altars catch fire. I command those altars catch fire. In the name of Jesus. Help that lead, help that lead. In the name of Jesus. Every illegal covenant and union with spirits that are in your family spirits in the bloodline marine spirits spirits of the waters spirit husbands and spirit wives that has afflicted you that has oppressed you and the members of the, your family i stand by the god of heaven and in the name of jesus i declare by the ministry of fire i separate you from those spirits I separate you from those spirits. I separate you by fire. I separate you by fire. Help them. I separate you by fire. Ladies, please put your right hand on your stomach. Put your right hand on your abdomen, ladies. Particularly where you have your umbilical cord. I want to pray deliverance now. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power. Father, any lady here that was unknowingly to her, unknowingly, that was dedicated to a spirit when they were born. Any lady here whose placenta has been tampered with by evil powers. 
any lady here that is illegally connected to any spirit that is not of God father as their right hand is placed where their umbilical cord used to be I make demands for the blood of Jesus by that blood I declare that they have been atoned for and legally they are hereby separated from that covenant Amen. and because of that separation every evil deposit in your body every spiritual deposit that is in your life at the count of seven I command it to come out by fire yeah. at the count of seven I command it to come out by fire yeah. now just be quiet at the count of seven by fire I declare let this deliverance happen let yokes be broken yokes of marital delay oppression of any kind poverty stagnation let yokes be destroyed right now one two three four that's it that's it it's coming out five help them just help them right now i flush it out by fire by fire by fire you spirit that is from the underworld you can't hide you can't hide by the ministry of fire i command you let them help them help them go let them help let them help them help them help them help them, help them, help them. let them go six and now seven i break your hold and i command you come out of them come out of their lives come out of them now come out of them now Just help them. Deliverance is happening. Father, I pray for anyone here that is afflicted by the oppression of spirit husbands or spirit wives. Right now, I release the sword of judgment to that spirit. And I declare like a knife, let the sword of God separate you from that spirit. I step into your dream life in the realm of the spirit and I break that covenant I break that covenant I break that covenant I break that covenant now just help them deliverance is happening everywhere anything that was buried in your body anything that was hidden either physically or by spiritual means it is coming out now it is coming out now it is coming out now at the count of three it is coming out now one two three help, help them out of them it's coming out 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 It's coming out. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. It's coming out. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power. I declare in the name of Jesus over your life every transgenerational yoke of poverty it comes to an end I command that yoke to be broken now from today I decree and declare that Jesus Christ who died and rose again for your salvation becomes your rock and becomes your foundation I'm still praying but deliverance is still happening everywhere I block you out of that satanic coven I block you don't don't say amen just listen I'm addressing spirits wait I'm addressing spirit I block you out of that satanic coven and I plant your foot on Jesus Christ therefore every spirit at work in your life I declare their time of expiration has come I command those spirits let them go now 
Let them go now. Please put your right hand on your forehead. There are seven people that the power of God is going to touch right now. God is doing a deliverance in your family. Seven of you, right now. It will be massive. Father, as I count to seven, let your right hand of power touch those seven people. Let every hidden glory and every hidden destiny in that family be manifested right now. Every spirit that has hidden their glory, hidden their breakthrough, I cause that spirit right now. And I command their identity. Help them. Help that, help that lady. I command their identity to be manifested now. At the count of seven, let that deliverance happen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Touch. Help them. Help them. Help that lady. <laughs> hey, tonight is a night. Oh. I cause that yoke. I cause that yoke. I cause that serpentine spirit. I set you on fire now. Your reign of terror in that family is over. Every transaction that was entered into before you were born, I hereby declare it suspended, 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 suspended. Finally, I want to pray over your life. The Bible says, What is the Lamb who was slain? To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and blessing and glory. Seven things that I want to pray into the foundations of your life from today. He said, What is the Lamb that was slain to receive those seven things? If He has received it and you are His body, then it becomes part of your foundation from today. From today, your life will begin to operate by these forces. Number one, the power that comes by the grace of God, let it rest upon your life. Let it become a pillar in the foundation of your existence. I declare riches. I declare wisdom. I declare strength. I declare glory. I declare honor. I declare blessing. I speak by the authority that is in the name of Jesus. From today, let these seven forces become the force that powers your destiny. Becomes the force that powers your existence. Becomes the force that powers your life. I want you to shout amen as loud as you can. Wave your hands and give the Lord praise. Wave your hands and give the Lord praise. All the glory must be to the Lord. For He is worthy of our praise. No man on earth. Anyone here whose destiny is meant to manifest overseas tonight and right now, not tomorrow, right now, I command the gates of that nation to open for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Judith, Judith, I'm hearing that name very strong. You probably may be following online. And I'm seeing another name connected to you that starts with the letter D-A. D-A. I don't know, but that's, I'm just seeing that other name connected to Judith. God is visiting your family and God is rolling away the reproach of delay. That's what God is showing me. He's rolling away the, the reproach of delay in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise tonight. Let your name be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name.